All right, guys, welcome back to the video. So if you missed the kind of the pre-intro to this whole series of doing these screwdrivers, you can go back and watch that. There'll be a link in the card up above. But today, what we're going to be working on is the Torx handle. So for my Canadian viewers who probably don't know a whole lot about Torx, it's this weird six-starred uh, driver that's very popular in the U.S. for some reason. So I'm starting with these because if I royally screw up, I don't particularly care about them because I rarely ever use Torx screws. But they're part of the set that I'm working with, and I might as well start with them anyway. So since this is the first set I'm doing, I decided before I ended up having to fool around on camera, uh, I would break out one of the heads and figure out how they are actually attached in the handles. Because a lot of the tutorials I've seen, uh, basically all you do is you just hold the screwdriver in a vise, and then you can pry off the handle. And clearly what you can see from this head here is that that's not going to work, because we've got this weird flat section that really has no way of getting pulled out through the handle here. So what we're going to be doing to free the rest of the heads from these handles is just taking a hacksaw and just cutting it off uh, approximately where this flat section starts. So now that I have this one free, I can use that to judge where approximately I need to cut. So real quickly, I'm just going to go through and free the heads from these other three that we're going to be working on today, uh, and then we will get on to doing the handles. So before we get going to the video, I want to let you guys know that I started a Patreon page recently where you can go and become a monthly member, and there's different perks depending on which tier you join. If you join that top tier, you're going to be part of a monthly design session happening the first Saturday of every single month, where you, me, and everyone else who's a part of that, that level are going to get together on Google Meets and hang out and just talk about design designs, work on projects, and just help each other out in whatever way we can. Also, as a part of that top tier, you get free access to all of my digital plans and sketchup files for both the projects that I'm currently working on, as well as all the ones that are in the past. Or if you want to support the channel another way, you can visit my website where you can find all my different merch. This is by far one of my favorite hoodies that I've ever owned, not just because it's got my name on it, but because it's just a really nice hoodie with a really sweet design. But there will be links to both my Patreon and my merch in both the description, as well as the card above. So I really appreciate it if you guys be willing to check out either of them, but anyway, let's get right back into the video. <laughs>
Okay, so we've got our three handles here. We actually are doing four screwdrivers, but I already finished the fourth one. Uh, it's fully completed, it's, it's looking great. Uh, but I wanted to do a test run before I started doing stuff on camera because I really had no idea what I was doing on that first one. So now we're gonna catch these other three up to that first one. But first I wanted to talk about some of the design. So on the rest of the screwdrivers, I want to get pretty, you know, experimental with it, try out different shapes and that. But for these ones, I just based them off of some screwdrivers that I already had. So these are Stanley Fat Max screwdrivers. These are pretty nice screwdrivers overall with a nice shape to them. And so there's three different sizes of these. There's the, uh, the big one that I got here, the medium size one that I got here, and then there's also some smaller ones that are somewhere in the drawer. But anyway, our two larger Torx screwdrivers here, I based on the bigger one. The only real difference is that the back end is just a little bit longer and a little bit thicker. And then there are two that are for the smaller of the Torx drivers are based on the, on the uh, medium size. Now, if you compare the smaller size handle to the one that was actually on the screwdrivers originally, you can see that they're massively different. And I find that as I was playing around with these, the handles that were originally on the smaller head uh, screwdrivers, it's just way too small. Like, the idea is that you're supposed to be able to get into some smaller places and that, uh, but overall, it's just really annoying. I can't actually hold it in my hands because I, I do have decently large hands, so this size is just too small. But the size I've got here is gonna be really nice. It's gonna let you get a good grip on it and all that kind of stuff. So the other part that I wanna talk about here is the fuller. Now, I have no idea if that's the right word. That's just the way I've seen it on a few of the different sources I've been following. So as you guys saw, all I did to make this is just take a section of black pipe, the same as I used on all my pipe clamps back there, hacked off a little section using a hacksaw and then use my one by 30 grinder to help clean things up a little bit, square them up the edges. Then I just use some epoxy to fasten them on. So now what we can go through and do is do all of our finished sanding and cleanup before we actually start adding in some of our final details here.
Okay, so there's our new set of freshly rehandled Torx screwdrivers. So we've got our two smaller ones with those slightly smaller handles. This was the first one that I did, and this one's actually my favorite because you'll notice at the end there, I sanded the screwdriver head and put some cold bluing on it to give it a more of a kind of a gunmetal look. The stuff I'm using I bought from Cabela's, it's quite literally for putting on gun barrels to make them darker, you know, gun gunmetal gray or blackish looking. So on this one, I sanded the head and I, and I put that bluing on there before I glued it into the handle, whereas on the other three, I forgot to put the bluing on before I put the heads into the handles. There definitely is a small area right at the transition here where it's not perfect, but I might go back in and you know either refine it or I might just leave it because it's also not that noticeable. Uh, but I think they all look super good. This one, I did do a little bit of a heavier round over back here, which revealed a little bit more of the white oak. I love having that exposed white oak on the end. Same thing on the front by the head there. We have a little bit of exposed white oak. So I think overall, it just looked really cool. Now, what I was really trying to mimic here was a burned finish. So as you guys know, I love burning stuff on the lathe. It's quite fun. I think I've talked about this recently. I don't think I've ever shown any video of it, but it's actually a pretty fun thing to do. Uh, but the problem is, is when you burn wood, especially a wood like white oak, it does have a tendency to split and crack. So you still get this really rich dark black color, but it, you do run that risk of splitting and cracking it, which I really didn't want to do, especially once you already have that metal on there. So I kind of use a mixture of any ink and alcohol-based dye to just try and get this kind of pure black texture. And it took a little bit of figuring out how to get it right. The trick is with your first coat of any ink is going to turn it pure black, but then there's always going to be some areas that you miss. So as you add more, that then loosens up the original any ink that you put on there and you can end up wearing it off. So what I found worked best is you start with a coat of the black al alcohol-based dye that dries up really quickly and that soaks in really deep. So that fills all your pores turns them pitch black. But with the alcohol-based dye, most of your surfaces are not gonna get turned that pure black. That's where you need the Indie ink because it's an actual, you know, pretty thick finish. Uh, so you put that on there and then just using friction, you can really get that black ink in deep into the wood, which then leaves you with just an awesome looking handle. These are gonna be really good. Again, this is Canada. We don't really use Torx screwdrivers a whole bunch. So these are mostly just gonna be decorative. They're just gonna be a part of the set. But I do think that for the first ones, they are amazing. I love the look of them. I really like the stippling right around the uh, narrow area here that actually it just feels super cool so i'm excited to uh put these away for safekeeping for a little while until i can actually build a storage case for these screwdrivers because i'm definitely not going to keep these in the same drawer that i keep the rest of my screwdrivers in so anyways guys that's going to do it for this video there will be some final glory shots of these screwdrivers in just a moment here but as always guys i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one